Well, you're back again. Welcome back. I'm Rob W1RCP. We're still on element two. That is the technician exam. We're in sub element six. Bravo. Let's go ahead and start this thing off with some diode questions. Question one is which is true about forward voltage drop in a diode? The only answer out of the choices below is that it is lower in some diode types than in others. This is a lot of electronic speak that we have going on here. Uh, like I've said before, getting a book on basic electronics might help you with your technician exam because there's a lot to it. But I hope that my videos are helping you with my drawings. Now, if you look, I have GE. That is a germanium diode. They're not used as much anymore, but they do have a voltage drop of about 0.3 volts. I've used them making audio electronics for guitar, guitar effects. Uh, they, they just have a different sound than a silicone diode, which has a voltage drop of 0.7 volts. Question number two, what electronic component allows current to flow in only one direction? And according to conventional current flow, and that's from the positive to the negative, and then you have what's called the electron flow, which is in the opposite direction of conventional, uh, think most of what you're going to think about is conventional current flow, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the answer is diode, is the out of those four choices, resistors, they don't care. They're going to let current flow in any direction. A fuse, any direction. A driven element of a antenna? Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, any direction. It's fine. Hook it up one way or the other. But a diode, one direction only. Let's go to questions three and four now. Which of these components can be used as an electronic switch? The correct answer is a transistor. Now, I have a very crude schematic drawing of the zero volts going to a positive voltage and then back to zero volts. And that would switch the load on in an NPN transistor. Now, the NPN transistor has a base collector and emitter. That's the BCE. The correct answer is for an electronic switch is a transistor. Question four, which of the following components can consist of three regions of semiconductor material? Now, I don't know why they didn't ask you two regions. A diode would be two regions. But a transistor has three regions. It has an N, and then it has the P section, and then it has the N section. And you can see, again, that I drew the collector, the base, and the emitter. It's a whole other class to talk about how transistors actually work. Let's go on to questions five and six now. What type of transistor has a gate, drain, and source? And you can see this one looks a little bit different. It's a lot more square instead of round. Uh, that's just how I picture a, a field effect transistor. FET is field effect transistor. And that's going to show up again here in just a moment. But that is one type of field effect transistor that I've drawn there. All right, question number six. How is the cathode lead of a semiconductor diode often marked? And notice I underlined in red on the package. This is my crude drawing of a diode so that I didn't have to go pull a bunch of stuff out of my uh, electronics kits. Anode is A, cathode is K. But on the actual package, it's going to be a stripe. And on most of your uh, rectifier diodes, they're going to be sort of a black body with a silver stripe. So that is the correct answer is with a stripe. They're not going to have the word cathode. They're not going to have a C and they're not going to have a K on them. It's going to be a stripe just as I've shown here. Question number seven, what causes a light emitting diode or LED for short to emit light? 
<laughs> now, this is from these choices. There's a lot more to LEDs than just forward current. There's a lot going on there. Uh, go read the story about how the blue LED was invented. It's quite intriguing. Uh, forward current is the correct answer. Now, this is conventional current going from positive to negative. And I got a little artsy-fartsy with the diode. The LED has usually two arrows coming off of it. And so forward current is what causes an LED to emit light. And here we go. Question number eight. What does the abbreviation FET, F-E-T, stand for? And that is field effect transistor. Now, field effect is sort of how these transistors work. They have more of a field, a depletion zone. Uh, there's the other type off the top of my head, can't remember. But this, and that's totally way beyond what they're asking here, but it's field effect transistor. Again, I'm not trying to give you a full electronics class here, but trying to give you an explanation of why the answers are the answers. So we go to question nine. What are the names for the electrodes of a diode? Now a diode only has two, and that is anode and cathode. We don't call them plus and minus or source and drain. That would The source and drain gate is for the field effect. Base is for a transistor. The correct answer is anode and cathode. Anode is an A, and cathode, for some reason, is a K. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Google it. All right, question number 10. I seriously don't know. Question number 10. Which of the following can provide power gain? And again, I drew a very crude schematic of a transistor that has an itty-bitty signal coming in but then a big fat signal coming out. And that is the correct answer, a transistor. Transformers, they don't provide power gain. A reactor, <laughs> that makes electricity maybe. And a resistor resists the flow. So it actually might reduce or turn that power into heat. But B, transistor. That is out of these four choices, that is what can provide your power gain. Now let's go to questions 11 and 12. What is the term that describes a device's ability to amplify a signal? You just have to remember that that is gain. Gain is also denoted with a capital A, which is funny because they also made it answer A. And I think this is the only time that I've told you the letter of the answer. <laughs> That's good stuff right there. Don't memorize the letters, y'all. It's gain. If you don't know, always pick C. Uh, you'll have about a, I think, about a 17% chance of getting it right. Alrighty, and question 12. This should be the last question out of this section. Again, remember, there's 35 parts to the technician exam, and there's 35 questions to the technician exam, and they're only going to pull one of these. For you to answer on the test. The last question, question 12, what are the names of the electrodes of a bipolar junction transistor? Well, BCE, if you can remember that, then you'll remember emitter base collector. Uh, it's not pole one, pole two, and output because this isn't a Dr. Seuss book. All right, guys, gals, hams, non-hams alike. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope that you're coming along on your studies and you're taking your practice exams and you are doing well and ready to become a ham. This is Robbie W1RCP73. Make sure you like and subscribe.